Hi, and welcome to a stop along our tour of the radio frequency spectrum. In this video, I'll be showing you the FM broadcast band, which in the United States goes from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. The FM broadcast signals that I'm showing in this video were received near Blacksburg, which is in the southwest region of Virginia in the United States. I'm using a software-defined radio known as the AirSpy R2, which is connected to my laptop by USB. The antenna is a simple telescoping dipole antenna, which is directly connected to the R2 with no impedance matching, no amplification, or no filtering of any kind. As a result, the noise floor in this demonstration is strongly dominated by the internal noise of this setup. I'm displaying the data in real time using the program GQRX running on Ubuntu Linux. If you want to try to reproduce this at home, perhaps using an inexpensive SDR and Microsoft Windows, my recommendation would be to purchase an RTL SDR V3 kit, which is about $40 US and includes an antenna. For software, I'd suggest the free-to-use program SDR Sharp from AirSpy. The disadvantages of that setup compared to what I'm using here would be that the sensitivity and dynamic range are not quite as good, and the instantaneous bandwidth is a little bit less, uh, only 2 MHz compared to the 10 MHz in my setup. But nevertheless, you'll still be able to repeat pretty much everything I'm about to do here. Anyway, back to my setup. The top panel is a spectrum display, that is, power spectral density is a function of frequency in megahertz. This display is in decibels, that is, log scale. This is traditional, and if I were to show this in linear scale instead, it would be hard to see the strong signal features at the same time as things happening close to the noise floor. By using log scale, we can see both clearly at once. The instantaneous bandwidth of my setup is 10 MHz, so here I'm only showing you the lower half of the FM band, that is 88 MHz through 98 MHz. But you can still see that there's a lot going on here. In the United States, FM stations are allocated center frequencies on a 200 kHz grid, and here you can see that essentially every one of those frequencies is being used. The bottom panel is what is variously known as dynamic spectrum, uh, the time frequency plane, or it may be referred to as a waterfall diagram. In this display, frequency is once again along the horizontal axis, and time is along the vertical axis. And of course, both displays are updating in real time. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in on the signal at 90.7 megahertz, the strong signal right here. Okay, here's a close-up of that signal at 90.7 megahertz. Now the width of the spectrum display has been reduced to about 1 megahertz. The shaded area in the center of the spectrum display is 200 kilohertz wide, so essentially the shaded area is the spectrum allocated to the signal. Note that the signal extends beyond this 200 kilohertz bandwidth on both sides. This is normal, as I've explained elsewhere. If you're a transmitter designer, or a station engineer, or a spectrum manager, this incursion into adjacent channels is something that you would spend a lot of time thinking about. The modulation of FM broadcast signals, including this one, is primarily wideband frequency modulation. I say primarily because each signal also contains a number of subcarriers which are embedded in the primary modulation. These subcarriers are usually not apparent by looking at the spectrum, but they're there, and they facilitate things like stereo audio, as opposed to merely mono audio. And also hidden in there is a digital signal, which contains metadata for the current program, including song title, artist, and so on. You can see that the spectrum is time varying. Specifically, the spectrum depends on the audio signal that's being sent. Here I'll unmute the demodulated audio for a moment so that you can see for yourself the relationship between the audio and the resulting modulation. Okay, here we go.
Okay, now I want to show you another FM station. Okay, this is 89.1 megahertz. And for this station, you'll see two additional signals, one on each side. Okay, here now I'm pointing at them with the cursor. Here's the one on the right side, the one on the left side, and both of these are just beyond the 200 kilohertz channel boundary. From the fact that these signals have nearly flat spectrum, you could infer that these are probably digital signals, and you would be correct. In fact, this is a digital multi-carrier modulation known as orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, abbreviated OFDM. These OFDM signals constitute what is known as IBOC, which stands for in-band on-channel, IBOC. IBOC is used to send additional content that can't be accommodated in the main FM modulated carrier, and some, but not all, FM stations use this. For example, if you hear an FM station talking about HD radio, well, that's content that's being sent using IBOC as opposed to the main FM carrier. Okay, now, one thing I'd like to show you is what happens when I move the antenna. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unmute the demodulated audio, and then I'm going to move the antenna around, both in position and orientation, while everything continues to run. And take a look at what happens. Did you notice that? The spectrum of the signal is clearly changing as I move the antenna around. This is due to multipath. Where I'm located, and pretty much everywhere else you might be listening to an FM station, you will typically receive not just one copy of the signal, but also additional slightly delayed copies due to reflections in the environment, from terrain, from uh, man-made objects, and so on. All these copies of the signal will have slightly different phases because they traveled along routes which have slightly different lengths. And additionally, the phases will depend on the relative delay. All of these copies of the signal go in and out of phase with each other, resulting in constructive and destructive interference. The amount of constructive or destructive interference depends on the frequency and precisely where the antenna is. The resulting effect, which was plain to see, is called fading. I'm going to repeat the experiment one more time so you can clearly see the fading as I move the antenna around. Supported by Fisher Investments. Fisher Investments team of specialists tailor portfolios to clients' long-term goals. FisherInvestments.com. Investments and securities involve the risk of loss. And by Palo Alto Networks. Secure access for hybrid workforces wherever work happens. The future of secure access is ZTNA 2.0. Palo Alto Networks.com. This concludes this brief tour of the FM Broadcast Band. Thanks for listening.